kind of, kind of, first and foremost, I'm going to give an Abinawa or Kohalam Abinawa Yahweh by Shema Mashiach. I'm like Yahweh Shah. That's all praises to our Father Yahweh, right? The Most High in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world entered, He calls Jesus Christ, the, uh, the Savior of the nation, the Yasha Allah, the Princess of the Power, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? It's Aka Kabash Ainawa, WFI Detroit, coming at you with a real quick video going into the fate of the Gentiles, man. What is the fate of the other Gentiles? Right, because you got got a lot of damn, I'm going to just put, we got you got a lot of coon Negroes, man. Or hey, you may not necessarily be a coon. You might be new to this thing. But nine times out of ten, it's a coon Negro. They kind of worried about the other nations. We kind of breaking down your salvation, and they just want to worry about the so-called white man, right? They want to worry about the East Indian man, the African man, all these other nations, right? So we finna get, you know, uh, go into the precepts, and show you the fate of the other nations, man. Right? Because hey, all things is answered through the scriptures, man. Right? First and foremost, I want to get this. Right? Book of Second Edris, chapter 9. Right? In verse 13, it says, And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, Whose the world is and for whom the world is created. So, hey, you shouldn't even be worried about how the ungodly is going to be punished and when they're going to be punished. But worry about your salvation, man. Worry about how do you get to the kingdom of heaven. Right? Because, look, man, the other nations, they got a bad lot, man. The Lord wrote they lot out already. Let me get it. Right? You got the Israelites and then you got the Gentiles. You have two different lots, man. Right? Right? Let's get that in Esther, right? Additions to Esther out the apocrypha, 10 and verse 9. It says, And my nation is this Israel which crieth to God, and were saved. For the Lord hath saved his people, and the Lord hath delivered us from those evils. And God wrought signs and great wonders which have not been done among the Gentiles. It's because he's not dealing with the Gentiles, man. Right? If you did not know, Right. If you if you had no idea, the Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel. He's not dealing with the Gentiles. Right. Reading on. It says, therefore, have he made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the Gentiles. So you have a one lot for the people of God and you have another lot for the Gentiles. So we're going into the lot of the Gentiles. man. Right. What is the lot of the Gentiles? What is their fate? Right. What is the Lord going to do to all these other nations? man? Right. Because I got to tell you something. It's only 12 gates to the kingdom of heaven. Right. We go bring that up. Right. Revelation 12. Right. Revelation 12, verse one. Saki. Revelation 21, verse one. Right. It says. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Right, so now we're describing the kingdom of heaven. Right, verse 12, it says, And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. And at the 12 gates, 12 angels, right? And names that written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Right, so it's not a 13th gate, right, for the Gentiles. It doesn't say Gawayim on the 13th gate, huh? Right, it's 12 gates, right? You got Yahawadah, Luwaiah, Banyamian. Right, if a uh, parium, right? You got all the twelve tribes, man. Right, you have no uh gate for the Gentiles, man. Right, two different gates, man. Right, and that's what we that's what we bringing out, man. Right, what 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 is the fate of these nations? Why don't they have a gate to the kingdom? What are they gonna do in the kingdom? Right, what is their lot, man? What is this separate lot that the Gentiles have besides the uh? Before the, uh, I mean, slack. Let me just get this. All right. Bear with me. It's, you know, it's kind of two in the morning. All right. It's the book of Proverbs 16 and 4. It says, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. Right. So the Lord made the wicked for the day of evil. Man, he created these other nations strictly for a purpose, and their purpose is for the day of evil. So the Lord can render his judgment upon them, man. Right? That's literally the lot of all these other nations. 
They're to be judged by the Heavenly Father so he can show his power. Right? Let's get that. Right? And chiefly the so-called white man, but it's all the other nations. Right? They're that main vessel that's fitted for destruction. Right? This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 21. It says, have not pow the power, so I can have not the powder, power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another to dishonor. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Right. So the Lord is dealing with much long suffering. Right. Letting these nations do what they do, man. Letting them just rack up their sin. Right. Because he, you know, over anything little we do, he automatically spank us. But he's letting the nations rack up a, a, a damn, you know, rap sheet so high so he can put them so he can put them down. Right. He wants the, their sins to mount unto the heavens. man. Right. Again, chiefly the so-called white man. But all these other nations play a part in that. Right. It says. And that he might make known the power, the riches of his glory, the vessels of mercy, which had a fourth time be prepared unto glory. Right. You see that. So the Lord is letting you know right then and there. There's the vessels of honor and the vessels, uh, uh, or, you know, a destruction. Right, we're that vessel of honor, right? The two different lots. They're the vessel of destruction, the so-called white man. These other nations that are partakers in the so-called white man's deeds, right? So I'm gonna show you how they're gonna be in the kingdom, right? These are the. As a matter of fact, let me get this real quick, right? The book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So anything that the Lord said that he put forth on the earth is going to come to pass, man. Right? The Lord is not going to speak things just for them not to come to pass, for them to be null and void, man. Right? It says, have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? Because people think the Lord is going to speak things and not make it good. Because we bring out these precepts all the time. Right? We bring out these precepts I'm about, about to go into to show the fate of the Gentiles. We bring them out all the time. But yet people don't um, agree with what the Lord said. They don't believe what the Bible said. And hey, even Christ said this, man. Right? Get this in the book of Matthew. Right? Chapter 5. Right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 17. It says, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. Hey, so he didn't come to destroy any of the prophecies in the Bible, right? I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill, right? He came to fulfill what was written of him in the Old Testament. But nonetheless, a hey, Christ said the prophets are not destroyed, meaning the things that the prophets spoke about, they have to come to pass. Right. Nothing can stop this, man. Nothing can stop what the world it's like what the Lord already ordained, man. All right, let's get another one. Let's get another preset. Right. Bear with me. Let's see. Let me just get this one. This is book Isaiah chapter 55. And verse, um, I'm going to start at 8. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Right, so the most high thoughts is on a whole nother playing field. We was talking about that at camp the other day. Imagine not having an, a beginning. Right, he just wasn't created. He just is. He just been here. It'll make your head explode because you can't fathom just no, having no beginning. Make my head hurt thinking about it, man. Not having any beginning. So his thoughts and his ways are so above man because a man got miserable thoughts, man. Right? We kind of go off, don't know why. Right, we just we just feeble uh dust and ashes, man. Right, it's the book of Sluggy. It's not what I want. It's the book of Is it twelve? 
It's like here. The book of uh, Solomon, chapter 9, and verse 13. It says, For what man, it's like, for what man is he that can know the counsel of God or who can think what the will of the Lord is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and their devices are but uncertain. See that? So the Lord said, Hey, we got miserable thoughts. So his thoughts are like, Look, man, we can't even begin to imagine the works of the Lord, right? For this book, Isaiah, right, chapter 55, verse 10, it says, For as rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, right? And it's raining outside right now. Right? I'm in Michigan. It's always them, you know, during the winter's blizzards, man. And that snow don't just stop midway and go back up. It surely comes down to the ground. Right, the same way that happens, it says, and return if not tither, but water the earth and make it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein to I sent it. Right, so whenever the Lord speaks a prophecy, Right, it has to come to pass. It has to. Nothing can stop it, man. No force, no entity, no emotion, no pastor, right? No BS is gonna stop the words of the Lord, man. Right. So we go read some of the words of the Lord. We go get some of these prophecies, man, and see the fate of the Gentiles right from the beginning. Right. Let's get that in Genesis. Right. Bear with me. Gotta find this precept. Bear with me. I mean twenty two. Let me try that. I think it's twenty two. It's the book of Genesis chapter twenty two. Right in verse 15, it says, And the angel of the Lord came unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, be, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy only son, so like thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed, right, the seed of Abraham, shall possess the gate of his enemies. Right, so the seed of Abraham is going to possess the gate of his enemies, man. Right, and it says, And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Right, and we all know that the chosen seed line goes through Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. Right, because let me get that. Because Isaac was chose over uh, Ishmael. Right, and Jacob was chose over Esau. Let's prove it, right? It's the book of Genesis, chapter 17, and verse, uh, it's like here, verse uh, 19, it says, And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. <clears throat> but I will establish, and I will establish my covenant with him. For an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I will bless him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. So Ishmael was blessed. Right. Then it says, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear thee unto so I can bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Right. So Isaac through Isaac was the uh, chosen lineage, man. Right. And we can even read further into that. But I want to get this quick precept. Right. Right. And Abraham's blessing was to his seed to possess, to own the gate of his enemies. Right. This is all going into the fate of the Gentiles. But we got to establish some things from the beginning, man, what it, what it was. Right? It's the book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 6. It says, let me start at 5. 
right? It says, remember, matter of fact, four, right? It says, seek Yahweh and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye seed, you children of Israel, his chosen. It's like you children of Jacob, his chosen. Right? So the seed of Abraham, the seed of Jacob, those are the chosen seed lines. Right? It says, he is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham in his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So Israel was given that everlasting covenant. man. Right? And again, that covenant is said it, uh, Abraham, which means uh, Abraham, right? Exalted father. He's going to be an exalted father. Right, have multiple seeds, and his seed is going to be multiplied, and they're going to own, they're going to possess the gate of their enemies, man. Right? You see that? Let's get that. Let's go back to Genesis. The Bible kind of falling apart. Let's let's get that blessing. Let's get the blessing of Jacob. Right? Further hidden home. Right? It's the book of Genesis, chapter 27. And again, hey, you can't. You can't just change what the Lord said would happen, man. Right? The Lord can't just speak things and then now it's just, you know, it's just going now. Right? What the Lord said, it got to happen, man. The Lord can't just say these promises and now all of a sudden they don't exist. Right? So these promises still fit today, man. Right? Everlasting covenant. Right? So this is the book, Genesis chapter 27. Right? And... So I can bear with me. Uh, I'm trying to get find this exact blessing. All right, it's verse twenty twenty eight. Where can I? I'm gonna start at uh. Yeah. See where I want to. So I'm gonna start at. All right, I'm gonna start at twenty uh eight or twenty. No, just let me get the context. I'm gonna start at eighteen. I just want to get the context. All right. So this twenty, this twenty seven and eighteen. It says, and he came unto his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat venison with and eat my venison, that thy soul may bless me. Right. So basically, Jacob did what his name was and supplanted Esau for the blessing. Right now, we're going to read the blessing that Abraham gave to his son. Right. This is the book. Of uh, Genesis twenty-seven to twenty-seven, and he, <clears throat> so I can, he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him, and said, "See, the smell of my son is the smell of a field which the Most High hath blessed. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren." And thy mother's son bow down to thee. Curse be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be every one that blesseth thee. So nations are going to bow down and serve the seed of Jacob. Right? That's thus saith the Lord. Right? Let's get this in Deuteronomy. Right? Because that covenant was made with a seed line. Right? It's Gen this Deuteronomy 10 and verse 15. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. So the seed of Jacob, right, has the blessing of Abraham, which is to possess the gate of his enemies, man. It's even in the law for them to possess the gate of their enemies, right? So the fate of the Gentiles is for them to be a possession unto the Israelites, man. And that's thus said the Lord, thus said the Bible.
right? Let's get this. Let's get that in the law, right? And the law is perfect, right? So what I'm about to read is a perfect thing. Let me get this preset, right? Book of, what's that? Sirach chapter, just like bear with me, 34 verse 8. It says, the Lord shall be found perfect without lies. And wisdom is the perfection of a, a faithful mouth. Right? So we got to gotta bring it out, man. Or are you finna go into the law? Right? This Leviticus 25 and verse 44. Right? And it reads, Both thy bond men and thy bond maids, shall, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Right? The heathen are all the other nations. Because like I said, you're going to possess the gate of your enemies, right? Which is the heathen, the other nations. And let's prove that real quick. That the heathen is the other nations, right? And that word heathen is Gawain, Gentile, nations, right? Any nation outside the Israelites, right? It's the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, and verse 9. As, as I said, is it not good that ye do? Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? Right? The other nations, man. Right? It's Gwayam Ayat Yanawa, right? The nations are enemies, man. Right? Alright, this Deuteronomy, it's like in Leviticus 25, verse 44. Right? This is going into the law of having bond men and bond maids. It says, Both thy bond men and thy bond maids, which thou shalt have. Right? So it's lawful to have slaves, man. Right, the Lord said, ask of me and I shall give you the heathen for your inheritance, man. Let's get that, man. Right, so it's lawful to actually put nations in slavery, right? It's the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 8. It says, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession, right? The Lord is telling, hey, ask me of these things, man, and I'm going to give you the heathen in the uttermost parts of the earth, right? Which is the blessing that we just read. The nations are going to bow down, serve the seed of Jacob, right? The same promise that Abraham got that he passed on to Isaac through Jacob. And he's going to have the fatness of the earth, the uttermost parts, possessions of it. Right? We're going to own the earth, right? It's really that simple, man. Right? Leviticus 25 and 40 socket in verse 44 and it says of them shall ye buy bond men and bonds made right so you're gonna buy slaves man right and it says moreover of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you of them shall ye buy and of their families that are with you which they begat in your lands and they shall be your possession so the children that's among us they're gonna be a possession Right, read. Let me slack you reading on. It says, And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you. So your children are going to own their children. Right? It says, To inherit for, for so it's like to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen, your slaves forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule one another. It's like you should not rule one over another with rigor. Right? So it's a distinction between the Israelites and the Gentiles. It's one lot between the children of God and the, the damn Gentiles. Right? So the Lord is telling you straight up and down what it is, man. Right? They're going to go into slavery. Right. Once the kingdom is back, it's going to be governed by the Bible. And the Bible says you can buy of these people. Right. And it's actually prophesied that they're going to go into slavery, not only through Abraham uh, blessing. Right. But on multiple accounts through different prophets. Right. Let me go get that in the book of Isaiah. Right. The classic book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse one. It says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So this is future prophecy. The Lord is saying he's going to set Jacob in their own land. Right? Because you can scoff and try to say maybe this is talking about the Babylonian captivity. Well, 
we'll have to see if this came to pass yet, right? It says, and strangers shall be joined with them. Now, when we went back into our own land, it wasn't strangers. The nations wasn't joined with us. Or we went back into our land 330 or so like 539 BC, and we basically got transferred from one slavery to another. Right? Cyrus the Prince, right? He just led us back in our own land and rebuilt the temple, man. And that's it. Right? We still had to pay tribute and we still was under captivity. Esther was a damn concubine queen. I mean, we were slaves, right? So we didn't have the other nations join with us going back into our land. So therefore, this this did not happen yet. Right? It says, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, right? They're going to cleave unto the house of Jacob. And it says, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Now, it was playing upon tables. The Lord said the nations are going to be slaves, servants and handmaids. They're going to be possessed, man, by the Israelites. There's no way around it. Right. Just take your emotions out and deal with it, man. They're going into slavery. That's what the Bible says, man. Right. It says, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. man. Right. And who's being oppressed on the earth? The so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. They're going to take everyone that's possessing them. Everyone that's uh, captive, who's oppressing them, everybody who has them in captive, they're going to go into slavery. That's thus said the Lord, thus said the Bible, right? You get that in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, and verse 16. It says, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, right? Your enemies, the nations, every one of them shall go into captivity, Right, they're gonna go into slavery. That's in the Bible. Right, all the nations that harmed it, they're going back, they're going into slavery, man. You can't get around the, the words of the Lord. All right. Let's get that, man. It is the gospel right here, man. Isaiah the 60th chapter. That's that's the gospel, man. Right? It's like Isaiah 61. That's actually the gospel. Let's get it. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, and verse 4. It says, and they shall build the old waste they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities the desolations of many generations and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers so they're going to be our plowmen and vine dressers they're going to do the field work feed our animals they're going to be captives slaves man right it says but ye shall be named priests of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves, man. So we're literally going to take all their riches. They're going to have their gates open and bring in their riches to us. All right, let me get that. The book of Isaiah 60. And... All right, bear with me. Where's that in 61 still? Bear with me. Here it is. Uh, I'm going to start at, uh, I'm going to start at verse 9. No, I'm going to start at 7. It says, all the flocks of Kadar, right, this is Isaiah 60 and 7. All the flocks of Kadar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth, Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance of mine on mine offer, altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. So the Lord is saying all these nations, they go bring their flocks, man. They go bring their rams. They go bring all their resources unto the Israelites, man. That's what the Bible is saying. And it says, who are these that fly as a cloud and as the dove to their windows. Surely the owls shall wait for me, the ships of Tyrus first, to bring thy sons from far. So they're going to bring their sons unto us, right? To be slaves, man, right? It just said we're going to buy of, of slaves. Then it says, 
their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Reading on, it says, And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So in his wrath he smote the Israelites. But he did that not because he was uh, pissed off. I mean, slacky, not because he wanted to kill us, not for our destruction, like it's, like you read in uh, it's Baruch 4 and 6, but because he was mad at us. So in his wrath, he smote us, but in his favor, he's going to bless us and give us that, literally the blessing we just read from Abraham on down to Isaac, to Jacob, right? To possess the gate of our enemies and have the fatness of the earth, right? That's what this is going into. This is the, this is the promises of the Lord, man, right? You can't disannul the promises of the Most High. Right, take your emotions out and just deal with what it says. It's black and white. It says what it says. Right, and it says, "Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually; they shall not shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Right, that their kings may be brought." And that they can bring in their forces, their riches, right? Like I said, all the flocks of Qadar, all the rams of this land, right? All the gold and silver, their sons, they're going to bring that unto the Israelites. They're going to call us the ministers of their God, right? They're going to worship Yahweh through the Israelites. That's what it means to minister. We're doing the work of the Lord, right? And it says, for the nation and kingdom that would not serve thee, the nation should, it's like, for the nation and kingdom that would not serve thee, shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Huh? So if they don't serve, they're going to get put to death. Right? The Lord is going to do it. Because huh? we're going to force them to keep the commandments. Right? They're going to be forced not to be homosexuals. Forced not to eat pork. Right? That's their fate. To be slaves in the kingdom and under the rule Israelites. Being ruled in righteousness. Right? As it should be, man. Right? And they're going to be happy to serve the Israelites, man. In that day. Right? Let me get that. If I can find that preset. Or will I? I used the book of Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23. It says, Thus says the, the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you. For we have heard that God is with you. So they're going to gladly do that. And that day they're going to be willing, man. Like the brother said, they got to get down or lay down, man. Right? It's not going to be a choice in this thing, man. Right? Let's get some more judgment, man. Right? And these things, again, you can't avoid it, man. Right? It literally says it. And the Lord said, whatever he says, just like rain is surely to hit the ground, it happens. So no amount of emotions, yelling. Damn, pulling weak precepts that you don't even know it's going into is go counteract the Bible. All right, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 148. It's like at 149 of verse 6. It says, Let high praises of God be in their mouth. It's like I'm starting at 5, 149 to 5. It says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, right? Fetters of iron, chains on their neck, man. This is talking about slavery, right? It says to execute upon them the judgment written and we're reading the judgment, right? We're going to take them, bring them to our place. They're going to build up the walls, right? This is going to be a, a act done by force, right? Us taking them into slavery, man, right? It says, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord, man. So that's an honor, man, to be able to execute the vengeance of the Most High, right? To actually be able to kind of rip open the underground bunkers, man. Your damn superpowers, you kind of blast it open, man. Right, kind of lift them up, man, with your damn mind, whatever the hell, man, and kind of put a chain around their neck and drag them to Jerusalem, man. Right, that's a damn, a damn uh, honor, man. 
in the, in the, in the eyes of the Lord, man. Right? You should be uh you should want that, man. You should want the nations that raped, robbed, and murdered your people to go into slavery. Right? Mano y mano, eye for an eye, man. Right? That that's just how it is, man. That's the judgment and the fate of the Gentiles. They're going into slavery. Thus saith the Lord, man. Right? Let's get that, man. Through the spirit, man. And people just be lying on it. Like, come on, man. It says what it says, right? It's the book of Numbers, chapter 24, right? And verse uh, 18, it says, And Edom shall be a possession, and Seir also a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly, right? So here we go with nations that are going to be a possession, Right? You have to show me where in the Bible was Edom a possession, man, right? And that's actually going into an end-time prophecy of Christ coming back because he goes smoke the corners of Moab, right? That's what it says, man. When you read Numbers 24, right? Here's another precept. It's the book of Amos, chapter 9. In verse 10, it says, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruin and I will build it as the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, says the most high that doeth this. So the Lord is telling you that remnant of Edom, because it's going to be a remnant because World War Three, right? Nukes are going to hit and decimate and destroy these nations. So it's going to be a remnant of these nations left and they're going to all get taken into slavery, right? Through the power and might of the Lord with his, his Israelites, man. That's literally what the, that's the judgment, man. We're reading the judgment. It's nothing you can do to stop it. It literally says this, man. It literally says this. All throughout the, that's what it's talking about. The nation's going into slavery under the Israelites, man. Right? So you got to, you know, kind of deal with it, man. Right? That's the fate of the Gentiles, that fate that you want to be so blessed and so different. They're going into slavery. That's it, man. You can't get around the, the precepts, right? Let's get another one, man. Right. Let's get another one. All right, it's the book of Psalms, chapter 18. And... Psalms 18, verse 40. It says, Thou hast also given me the neck of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me. From the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. Man. Right, so the strangers are going to submit themselves unto the Israelites. Right, and that's thus said the Lord. They're going to rebuild this the kingdom up. They're going to have to serve the Israelites in righteousness, man. And that's in the law. The law doesn't, it's not, we read, he didn't come to destroy the law. The law said you can possess the heathen. Their children, you own them, and they're a possession and inheritance for your children. The Lord said, ask of me, I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. The Lord said, this is my promise to Abraham. He's going to possess the gate of his enemies. The enemies are the other nations. Psalms 83. Right, Nehemiah 5 and 9, man. So you can't get around this stuff, right? It's thus said the Lord, thus said the Bible. Right, let's get this. Right, so book of Psalm. Let me get this in the book of Psalm 81. It's like it's the book of Psalm chapter 81. And verse... 13, it says, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel walked in my ways. I should soon, I, I, like it, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. All right, so the Lord said, Hey, man, look, if, if they would have kept my commandments, I would have subdued their enemies. 
right? It says the haters of the Lord shall have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever, man. So they would have submitted themselves unto us, man, because that's the promise he gave unto us. If we kept our end of the stick, which was to keep the commandment. So the Lord had to give us the spirit to keep the law so he can render forth his judgment and do what he said. Because the Lord, look, man, the Lord is not going to lie. Everything he says has to come to pass. So if you think it's another fate of the Gentile, you have to break down these precepts. Right, you have to explain it, explain why the, the, the blessing that he gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob isn't no more. Right, explain why Isaiah lied, right? Explain why David lied, why Jeremiah lied, right? Explain why John the Revelator lied, right? Let's get that, man. In the book of Revelation, right? Chapter 13, verse 3, right? So you're calling John the, the Revelator a liar, man. Right? It says, it's like at 13 to verse 9, it says. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So the Lord said the Israelites would literally be faithfully waiting for those that led them into slavery to go into slavery. Right? That's, that's in the Bible. That's written right here. Right? So you're telling me that this is not going to come to pass? Is that what you're trying to tell me? That this not going to happen? Because it don't feel right in your heart. It don't feel right in your heart. Right? So you don't want it to happen. Right? It doesn't matter how you feel. It's about what's what's real. What's actually going to happen. Right? Through the spirit, man. So I think that's pretty much... That's pretty much all I got on that, man. So the fate of the Gentiles is for them to go into slavery. As right, a matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Right? It's the book of... Or the 32... It's the book of Psalms. It's like this book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 7. It says, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies on on them that hate thee, which persecutes thee. So the Lord said, look, in the last days, when he reverses the matter of fact, let me start at verse four. I'm going to start at three. This is Deuteronomy 30 and three. It says that then the Lord thy God will return thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. So the Lord, he's saying after he scattered us among all the nations, he bring us out of that captivity, right? He's going to put the same curses upon our enemies, right? Now let's read a curse. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but they shall not enjoy them for they shall go into captivity. So the nation's sons and daughters are going to go into captivity, right? Because we we went through that, and that's the same curses that they're going to get, man. And that, that's what the Lord just said, right, all throughout the Bible. So the other nations have to go into slavery, right? And if, the, and if we're, we make the Lord a liar, if we say otherwise, man. So that's the fate of the nations, man. Like that, I'm going to give a Kwame Yashala, death to America, right? Study, read, fast, pray. I love y'all, Lord willing, you know, edifying through the spirit. Shalom.